Hey everybody, it's Cody Fry. Uh, today we're going to go through my song, What If? Do a little production breakdown, talk a bit about how I made the song. So for What If? I wanted to sort of take the orchestral energy of that super viral sound from How to Train Your Dragon, John Powell, incredible composer, and sort of merge it with the vocal energy of something like Greatest Showman. Uh, so it's got like a very positive, uplifting, epic vibe. And one thing I like about the song is that the verses are really like up close and intimate, and then they're contrasted by like the epic chorus and refrain. So let's start in with the verses. I like these harp harmonics. Combined with the piano. It's sort of like these two mellow textures that are blended together. And kind of arpeggiating in the background is this rubber bridge guitar. Actually, let me get that. This is the rubber bridge guitar. My friend Caleb made it for me. And it's got a little piece of rubber on the bridge that makes the strings sound pretty dead. Sorry, it's really out of tune. I'm not going to play it. But uh, I love the way it sounds. It's sort of like if you, you know, when you put the practice pad on a piano, the rubber bridge is almost like the practice pad, but for a guitar. Yes, the practice pad or the Celeste pedal if you want to be that person. So here's the rubber bridge guitar. I'd compare it to sort of like a nylon string sound. It's a little bit different if you heard them back to back, but it has a really similar feel. And this is a guitar that was used a ton on like Taylor Swift's folklore record and uh, one of my favorite artists, Ethan Gruska, uses it a lot, and Madison Cunningham, who I love, uses Rubber Bridge all the time. So, I wanted one too. Also down here we have these uh, Albion Tundra strings from Spitfire Audio. The Tundra package is one of my favorite things. It's just those like icy, airy sort of string sounds, and they also have brass and woodwinds as well. It's just really, really cool textures. You also notice in this project we have some things that are labeled RPO. That stands for Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. So it looks like in this logic file, I actually exported the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra stuff as stems so that I could bring them in to this logic file to sort of layer them with the MIDI stuff. So you hear some of the RPO stuff as we go through the track. One thing I did to create the sort of percussive bed in this track is we have this bombo, which is a really old sample from, I think, East West, Storm Drum. We also have like the guitar. I used guitar perk to sort of create a more of a natural sounding thing. Like here you can hear it in the second verse really well. I'm just kind of like using the guitar like Ed Sheeran style as like a percussive instrument. It's got like a really nice woody quality that feels really organic. And when you layer that in with some of the more synthetic textures like these sort of 808 click stuff, just kind of gives it that organic feel. So let's jump over to the chorus. We're not going to cover any vocals right now because these are all just like the scratch vocals, but you can see the rubber bridge goes from this finger pick style and then transitions to the picking style. It's like almost another shaker texture because at this speed it's like it's like got that sort of shaker quality. So forming the basis of the drums, we have, of course, Strike Force. Love Strike Force. Just like big drums. The bumbo's in there this time, but we cut a bit of the low end out so that we are leaving room for the low end of the bigger percussion stuff. Ring clicks, hi-hat, tambourine. We have these huge toms. I don't know where these toms came from. They're called Love Somebody toms. It's because I used these toms on the song Love Somebody on uh, my album Flying, and I love the way they sound. So, but I don't know where they came from. And here we have sort of like the kick stuff, snare stuff, tambourine hits, that sort of thing. So you can hear sort of the kick drum kind of just is accenting and providing a little bit more low end to the strike force drums. 
And for the post chorus, we add in a little bit of like clapping texture and some tambo rolls. Oh, and then this enormous snare. Yeah. So mostly MIDI, some samples, some guitar percussion. It's kind of a mix of MIDI and organic human played percussion, just like stuff I had here in the studio. And I find that that's like a lot of times like the the meat of it is going to be MIDI stuff that is samples and whatnot. And then I'll add in sort of the human stuff on top to kind of give it again a little bit more of a human feel. So I use this Trillion bass module. I love the Spectrosonic stuff. And it's a Juno 60 bass, even though I literally have an actual Juno 60, like right over there. But sometimes it's just easier to work with MIDI. Uh, and honestly, this dark ballad Juno 60 has like a bit of low end stuff and it's really easy to tweak. And so it just kind of sounds amazing right outside of the box. And for something like this simple bass pulse, it's just nice to have it in MIDI. That way I can fly it around, change the timing and stuff, make sure the notes are correct. That's what it all sounds like together. Just this subtle marimba thing here with the flutes. And I think a lot of what makes it sound epic here in this post chorus is the timpani stuff. It just gives you that it just makes it sound so epic to have those rolls. In the second verse, we have this piano thing. And when we were recording the demo, I just like went over to this upright piano and, and played that in. So I thought it needed something there. And I wasn't really thinking about it, just kind of played it in. I think I could probably do a better job of it, but it just, there's something about the way it sounds in the demo. I tried to replay it, but it just never kind of captured the same energy as we had when we were just recording the demo. And so it ended up being in the final track. The second chorus is really similar to the first chorus, except we add this sort of cello counter melody in the lower register. So that just kind of provides a little bit of extra ear candy for the second chorus. And then I love, like, similar to the timpani rolls, I love the flute and piccolo given the <laughs> into that downbeat there. It's just so immediately orchestral, you know? It just has that archetypal orchestral thing. So here we are in Pro Tools, and this is the file that I send to the mixing engineer, and it's kind of like my rough mix so that they can get a sense of kind of what it's going to be. One of the things we did for this track is we recorded some group vocals, some amazing singers here in Nashville. Yeah, just adds so much energy. So the strings in the post choruses, they're actually playing a lot faster than you might think because when you hear it in the full mix, it just sounds like dun 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 dun. But they're actually playing dun 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 dun. Here's what it sounds like. And one thing I like about the track is for the final chorus, I had them change up the pattern. So instead of dun 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 it goes dun 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 So you get this sort of like multimeter thing going on. What if I fly? And then for like the very end of the outro, the last sort of refrain, we get this sort of walk up in the lower brass. Which is different than we had before. Oh, and then the little flute outro, like this. Just 
It's so fun. Just for a little fade out, the flutes kind of do this sort of random thing. The flutes and clarinets, I should say. So for the fly vocals, we actually have a couple different things going on. We got this lead vocal. Fly. Then doubles. Fly. And then sort of a group demo vocal thing of me doing it. And it's like I use very speed to sort of sing it in different keys so my voice sounds a little bit different. Fly. And then the actual group vocals. Fly. Fly. This was a really fun track to produce. I, I think it's it's fun to bring orchestra into like the more pop side of things and try to figure out ways to use orchestra in a way to make something sound epic, but also stay kind of like with slamming drums and stuff like that. It's not just like elegant orchestra. This is like epic pop orchestra. So it was a lot of fun to play in this space. And yeah, I hope you like this song. I think that's it. If you got any questions, throw them in the comments. I'll try my best to answer as many as I can. Uh, but thanks for watching this and thanks for supporting my music and for letting me make stuff like this. Uh, I don't take it for granted and I just really appreciate it. So thanks for being here.